Hello, and welcome to Bespoke Unit. My name is Rafael, and I'm back here today with a very refreshing video, and that's because I'm gonna be doing a comparison between the beloved, the traditional, the easily recognized Seiko SKX009, that's the Pepsi, and its replacement, the slightly controversial to some at least, the Seiko 5 Sports SBSA003. Now, you may find this watch under a couple different references, I have the SBSA 003, which means it's made entirely in Japan. Nevertheless, this looks exactly the same and is virtually the same watch as the SRPD 53, which is again, Seiko 5 Sports in the Pepsi, aka the Pepsi 5KX or something. I don't know, there's too many nicknames for me to keep up with. What's important is I have these three. I have a made in Japan version. I have a made outside of Japan version. I have a lot of watches. Let's get into them. So here we are with our two Seiko Pepsi sports watches. Of course, here in my left hand, I have the new generation, the Seiko 5 Sports, well, aka the 5KX Pepsi. Specifically, this is an SBSA 003. Um, however, the 5KX Pepsi is better recognized by its non-Japan version, non-made in Japan version, and that is the SRPD 53. Um, I have previously made videos on this channel, so you, I'll, I'll link them here, upper right corner in the card, um, where I go over the differences between a Japan market version, which usually have references that are SBSA and then numbers, and then the SRPD versions or SRP versions that are for the international market. Um, however, outside of the reference, the easy way to tell is there is a made in Japan there, as you can see at six o'clock. Similarly, the older generation, the SKX009 Pepsi, such as this one, these were also made both um, for the J Japanese market and for the international market. The Japan market, it was easier with the references back then where this is a non-Japan version. As you can see, it would also say there at six o'clock, made in Japan. Um, so this is an SKX009K the Japan market versions, which would be SKX009J. Anyways, getting down to business. So at a glance, these are quite similar. Um, and that's definitely by design. So Seiko took the SKX and they discontinued it back in 2019. And that's because they replaced it essentially with a new and upgraded Seiko 5 sports line. Now, the cases on these two are exactly the same. Essentially, the dimensions are the same, both diameter, lug to lug. In between the lugs are the strap size. Those are both the same. The finishes where they have brush top of the lugs and the polished case sides. Again, both are the same. And even down to this detail here on the side of the case where you have a edge between the top and the side. You can sort of see it here. These are still present here. This one's a little harder to see because obviously the watch has been worn a bit more. Continuing on again, the dimensions of the case are the same. Another big difference between these two is the bracelet that they come on. Now the SKX009 was sold either on this Jubilee style bracelet or on a rubber strap. You could find it on both. Um, this Pepsi version, I believe is either sold on this oyster bracelet, essentially, it looks like a three link Rolex oyster bracelet, or on a NATO strap, if I'm not mistaken, though, it's mostly available on this bracelet. So the new version, no longer, you don't have a, a Jubilee option, let's say, or I do find it interesting that whereas the older version or the older SKX has used to have a Jubilee bracelet, the new ones have closer to a um, oyster bracelet. So obviously, a lot of inspiration there coming from Seiko, um, from Rolex sports watches. Continuing on getting a closer look at the bezels, you can see that they're really the same. They both have that out, outside texture, the neural texture, where, you know, it obviously helps you to get a better grip there on the bezel. Um, obviously both unidirectional divers bezels that only rotate in one direction. Speaking of divers bezels, 
um, probably one of the biggest sticking points um, for SKX fans is the fact that the SKX used to have a screw down crown, which obviously means that the crown screws into the case and that gives you an extra level of security or um, waterproofness, let's say. So as you can see there on the dial, this made that the older generation, a 200 meter water resistant watch, whereas the new one, you can see I am able to rotate the crown here. So it doesn't, it no longer screws into the crown, into the case. So that means that the water resistance is only, is rated to 100 meters. Obviously those ratings are on the safe side. Um, maybe it would be able to survive at 150. However, certainly not 200. I highly doubt, you know, it survived twice the, the depth that it's rated for. So that is one of the biggest, as I mentioned, one of the biggest sticking points for many collectors who really found the SKX to be a, uh, to, to have the essence of a professional tool, a professional diver's watch. And with these new watches, the, the new five sports line, um, a lot of that has been replaced for more, what are, in my opinion, more refined elements that make it less of a professional tool, tool watch and more of an elegant sports timepiece. Then there's a question to be asked here as far as you know, how many people actually used the SKX for, you know, professional diving or that sort of thing. And I think Seiko likely asked themselves that and they wondered what the trade off would be in, in lowering the, the professional specifications and if it was worth it. And I guess it was one more element regarding the difference in the cases is the fact that our new generation has a see through case back where, you know, we can admire obviously that new updated for our 36 movement, which is actually, it has been finished. You can see it has some brushing there on the top of the bridges and also on the, the rotor, which I think, again, it's something that costs money for Seiko to do money and time. Um, but I think it's well worth it since they're now exhibiting the movement. It's worth spending some margin at the end of the day to make it look nice. And, you know, unfortunately here, our SKX didn't have that feature. Continuing on, getting a closer look at the bezels, we can see that the blue on the new generation srpd 53 is a lighter tone the red is pretty similar however the blue is a lot lighter i kind of i think i enjoy the new one more so than the old one however the old one still has its it's still attractive it's more of like a blueberry color if you will um last thing on the bezel is the fact that the older generation had a luminous pip as you can see here at the top index the new one does not. Now that is one of the aspects that would have helped this watch to be ISO certified. Essentially, it's a certification for a professional diving watch, um, which the five sports would no longer be able to meet. The old SKXs would be able to meet. However, it's a just because it meets it doesn't mean it's certified. That's an individual certification and Seiko wasn't spending the money to send each individual case out to this um, uh, regulatory body, let's say, that actually cert certifies the, the timepieces and ISO certified watch. Continuing on with the dial, we can see that the color of the dial is that's probably one of the biggest differences. Again, what I find is that the new generation, this SRPD 53 or the 5KX Pepsi has, um, again, it's a more formal timepiece, it's supposed to look prettier. Um, and I think it definitely does that. And I do enjoy this new blue sunray dial a lot more. It is a deep blue and in the light it shines. You can see those that brush finish kind of emanating from the center of the dial, which I think it is a lot more attractive. However, again, the older version is a darker blue. And in fact, uh, let me just fix that. You have to really, it, I don't think it's even coming across on camera at all, but this is a dark blue dial. I'm trying to catch it in the light and I having a hard time really getting it to, to show. I don't think it does. I have, let's see if I can compare it. So my right hand is a black dial SKX 013 and it's really very difficult to get this blue to show up on, on camera. 
but I can promise you that it's a dark, dark blue, so it does match the bezel to some extent. But again, more, it's, so it's a rougher, rougher around the edges timepiece. Again, many, many collectors found that to be the, the most romantic aspect of the SKX. Other than that, the elements on the dial are pretty similar. Of course, you have your oversized uh, hour indices, the hands are polished, everything has tons of loom. The hands do look a little bit wider, larger here on the new SRPD53, and the hour indices are applied steel. You can see that they contrast there when I catch it in the light. So it looks like they've been applied onto the dial, whereas the dial on the SKX was more flat, and then the loom was painted directly on there. Of course, the date window is exactly the same. My made in Japan version here has two languages. So they're English, hold on, let me make sure I can change the date safely. So you see it's English and Japanese. However, the weekend, Saturday's blue, Sunday's red, and there's no different colors on the day. With the SKX, this being a K version. Let's make sure we're safe to change the date once more. This being the K version, it had English and Spanish, but wait, is that? That's not Spanish. Wednesday, mad. Not sure what other language that is. That maybe it's out. I'm not sure. Anyways. English and another language. Um, that depends. That's not specific to the generation of the of the watch. It's more specific to um, what market it was made for. And those are actually super easy to change. So collectors um, can kind of put whatever date they want. Continuing with the movements, this is probably the biggest um, the biggest difference and what I, in my opinion, what sets the new generation over the top with regards to the old SKXs. Um, the new watches have the 4R36 movement. Both are self-winding automatic watches. Um, the new movement has two functions that I think are key. So I pull out the crown to the time setting position and you can see that the hands at center stopped. Push it back in seconds hand keeps going. Now what that means is that's a stop seconds function. So that allows you to set the watch to a reference time zone super accurately, not something you, that could be done with the previous SKX. So you see my seconds hand there is ticking. I pull out to the time setting position and the seconds hand is still going. So um, that's a sign of um, all modern calibers really have a hacking seconds function. And I think it's a nice addition it's a nice upgrade to an otherwise older movement. Another aspect of this is the fact that you can wind, hand wind the new generation right here in this position. That should be coming across on the, on the mic. Again, all I'm doing is winding the movement by rotating the crown clockwise. That's something that simply couldn't be done here. It just doesn't exist. So the only way to wind an SKX is to either wear the watch and the motion of your hands will wind it or kind of just sit here and move it around. So why I think that that's a huge uh, convenience factor is, you know, how often do you set your watch down? Maybe over the weekend, you didn't wear it and um, you wake up Monday morning and you're going to put it on and the time is off. And really, it's super easy to just wind it and then set the time and then you're ready to go. Other than that, power reserve is the same. The accuracy on the two movements, uh, I believe the upgraded movement, the 4R36 versus the 7S26, the 4R36 being uh, slightly more accurate. Of course, again, it's a much newer movement. There are advances in technology, especially for such a large brand as Seiko, um, where they're gonna be able to include those in the watch. But those are probably the biggest advantages and, and the pros and cons between the two. And here you have them, our two Pepsi Seiko sports watches. There you have it. That's our comparison of the older and well-liked Seiko SKX009 Pepsi and the new and improved and the better watch, in my opinion, the SBSA003 
the 5kx pepsi anyways if that video left you with any questions or comments leave them below and i'll get to them give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel for more content like this if you're looking for pricing or a more detailed article we've got it on the website and the pricing links are in the description so make sure to check those out as always i'm rafael this is bespoke unit thanks for watching mm -hmm.